Hi everyone, welcome to another gut video. And you might say, Elle, it says it's autoimmune. Why are you talking about the gut? I will explain. When you go into a doctor, they will test you. And depending on your test results, you get put into a category. You could have rheumatoid arthritis, you could have Sjogren's, you could have lupus. Never mind autoimmune, you could even have diabetes, cancer, any disease. And then they proceed to treat you accordingly, which is usually drugs, maybe surgery, or maybe telling you they can only medicate to keep you as comfortable as possible and there's nothing they can really do for it. What I believe is whatever you have, it's all related to your gut. If you keep your gut healthy, you won't get those diseases. Have you ever known people that are totally healthy? I used to be one of them until I messed up my gut. I got my health back when I fixed my gut. Now, am I as bulletproof as I used to be? No. I think that my gut is getting stronger and better, and most of the time I operate like I'm 100%, but I am not as strong. If I'm worn down, things can impact me like they don't impact my husband and Mark, because he has a strong gut. I think that so many people think that I'm doing these videos because of my autoimmunes. And if you don't know, I have four autoimmune, Sjogren's, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, and I forget the other one. Anyhow, I am doing it because of that and to share my knowledge, but it's also because I know what it's like when you're scared, when you feel like you have no hope, when you're out of control on your health, when you just want to curl up in a ball and cry because you think this trajectory is only going to get worse. And then when you try what I'm recommending and you start to see improvement, you think, wow, and you have hope. And it's not going to be like flipping a switch. It's going to be some trial and error, but at least you know it's in your control. And that, okay, this isn't working, let's try this or that. And I'll talk about the specifics. You can regain your health. Now I will grant you, the longer that you've been sick, the more it's going to take a while because your gut has been out of balance. For me, I was sick probably for two years or more that I didn't even realize or know. When I started to crash near the end, I was sick for probably, really sick, for half a year. And when I say really sick, I couldn't talk, my throat was bleeding, I had to peel my eyelids off my eyeballs, put in castor oil in the morning, I had to gargle with um, I can't think of the name of the special Listerine type of stuff. I had to take Plaxin. I was doing all kinds of things. It took me several hours till I could actually function. And even then, it was painful. There was days when I couldn't function, when I would be in bed. It was scary. I thought for sure I was going to be off on unemployment. When I found my functional doctor who helped me figure out the root cause, that is when I had hope and I started improving when I followed what he said. So the first thing is the root cause and that could be difficult. Have you been exposed to mildew, mold, vaccines, Botox, your diet? I know somebody who ate a lot of Slim Jims, like a lot, lived on those. I was vegan. There are any number of things that can disrupt your gut. And then I would say on top of it is stress, lack of sleep, things like that. Fixing your diet will help give your gut an advantage. And what I mean by that is all whole foods. Nothing but whole foods. Do that in the beginning. and it, 
any diet is temporary. When you hear about people who go carnivore and all their bloating has disappeared and they feel so much better, that's great. That shows it's their gut. But then when they go back and they eat vegetables and they get bloating, they haven't healed their gut. So they stay on carnivore. Well, that's not fixing the problem. You've identified that it is your gut that needs healing, but you have not fixed it. So the first thing is to try to give your gut every advantage. Avoid anything and everything that bothers it. Corn, probably nuts, flour, gluten, and only eat whole foods. That is meat. Primarily, I ate a lot of red meat in the beginning. Some vegetables, if it doesn't bother you. Fruit, if it doesn't bother you. I would listen to your body and try to stay with a lot of meat. And when I say meat, it's red meat. Roast, ground beef, steaks, some chicken, some salmon, some fish, but really focus on the meat. And then get other things that will help to heal. So I'm going to talk about supplements and a lot of people don't like when I list off a million different supplements. And I can understand that. One, it costs money. And two, you want to focus in on just the ones that will help. The challenge is everybody's individual. And even in some of these ones that I'm going to list, some will work for you that might not work for the next person. I'm going to be as generic as possible and try to limit it to four or five, which, if you know me, isn't very many supplements. I'm not saying this is going to heal your gut. I'm saying it's going to help and it's going to start. Then, depending on your condition, you might need something else, depending what's wrong. So the very first thing I would say, and I've done a video on this, is get rid of any parasites. Most of us have parasites. If you eat vegetables, if you have a pet, if you've been around somebody with a pet, even if none of those things are true, there's airborne parasites. We probably all have parasites. My friends in India are shocked that we don't get rid of parasites on a regular basis. And I know that our society is different than their, you know, some of their society that we have you know, sanitizers everywhere and things like that, and I don't know that that's good, but we think we don't need it, and we're wrong. We do, and I did a whole video on the parasites. I will link, you could do black wormwood, you could do oil of oregano, you could do a lot of different natural things. I'm a very person who believes in natural things. I've never had success with natural things with parasites. I think you have to get rid of them. And there's two things that we do once a month. And when I say we, it's myself, my husband, and our golden retriever. And I will link below the products as well as the dosage. There's two of them, and we do those on the first of every month. That will help your gut to start functioning better. Everything that's wrong, if you picture a car engine, it's all interconnected. So everything that's wrong with your gut, the more that you heal it, the more chance you're giving it. So get rid of the parasites. Then I would also say to take, depending on your situation, acid. So it could be apple cider vinegar if you don't have a gut that's really out of whack. Mine was horrifically out of whack. And I could eat hydrochloric acid with, like it was candy, like it was just going out of style and it didn't impact me. I even took it without food, which I cannot do now because my gut is healed and it doesn't need all that acid. So when you don't have enough acid, your little flap between your small intestine and your large intestine, it doesn't have the acid in there to dissolve the food, to get the food down into your large intestine where then it can get absorbed properly. You might have acid reflex, you might have burping, you might have all kinds of signs of indigestion. You might be like me and not have any of those signs and not really think it's anything like that. 
When I went to my functional doctor, I didn't know it was my gut, and I certainly didn't think I was lacking in acid. If you are on antacids, you probably need more acid. And the number one thing I could recommend is betaine. Now take it with a meal. In fact, I take it in the middle of a meal with protein. So if I'm eating a steak, I will have a couple of bites of my meal, and five minutes in, I take my betaine. It will give your small intestine enough acid that it can digest things, and then you can get the nutrients into your gut. I don't know the dosage, start with one. See how you feel. If you have a warming in your gut and almost feel like fluish, you probably don't need it, and that will pass within five minutes. It's not fun, but it'll pass. So start with apple cider vinegar, and if you can handle the taste, work up from there. Otherwise, betaine. The next thing I would recommend is either noni, which is also known as marinda. This is a fruit from South America, or neem leaf. Both of these are anti-inflammatories. They are wonderful and they will help with all your inflammation. Most autoimmune diseases have inflammation. So it will help with the inflammation and help give your gut an opportunity to heal. The next things would be Chinese coptis and takasami. So Chinese coptis will help with any kind of bacterial overgrowth and trying to get that sorted out. And the takasami, as your body releases the bad stuff, the takasami absorbs it and whisks it away. So it's like a charcoal, but it's a really high quality charcoal. And it will absorb and whisk it away. And again, I will link these below and link the dosage as well as links to the product. For giving your immunity a chance, Monolaurin is coconut, so if you're allergic to coconut, you cannot take this. It surrounds the bad bacteria, it doesn't touch the good bacteria, and it will give your immune system more of a fighting chance. And then Camu Camu, that is a really good quality vitamin C. Most people take like ascorbic acid, and it's like, that isn't vitamin C. I would say Camu Camu or Acerola powder. Um, Either one of those is definitely the way to go. Camu Camu is in a pill, and Acerola powder is a powder. <laughs> and it tastes really good. It's kind of a little tart that you can put in your water if you can't take pills. I like both of those. So those are the supplements. If you are eating whole foods and you do these supplements, all of this is temporary. And again, it's giving your body every advantage to heal. And finally, if you're doing those things, I would say there's a couple more things you need to do. Get good sleep. Whatever you have to do, I was taking Ambien. Is that the best? Probably not. I needed my sleep. And I think drugged sleep is better than no sleep. And I would have gotten little to no sleep, like three or four hours. I don't ever take it now, but back then I needed help because my body was not functioning properly and giving it sleep is when your body heals. I'm not recommending you take drugs. You have to figure out what's right for you. I don't know your body condition. Everybody gets on me, oh, Al. I assume the people I'm talking to are smart enough to do their own research and think things through. But get sleep, whatever that could be for you. Now I try to take magnesium in different forms. I don't take pills anymore, and I'll do a whole video about that. But getting good sleep is crucial. Get out in the sun. And people who use sunscreen, I would challenge you. They've taken cancer, skin cancer patients, and they had two different groups. One got conventional treatment. One group was told to go out in the sun. The group that went out in the sun got rid of their cancer. I believe they also put some castor oil on the specific spots. It, it shows you that the sun is good for you. It builds up not only your vitamin D, but it builds up your resistance to cancer. And if you go outside, even for two minutes, two, three minutes, as early as you can when you wake up in the morning, and then at sunset, that will help with your circadian rhythm, which will then help with your sleep. I always try to give some practical, free advice. 
The other thing is, if you're up for it, walk, especially after meals. After dinner, I try to get all three of us out. I like to go for a longer walk. Mark doesn't. We'll do whatever I can get him to do. Anything is better than nothing. Start somewhere. If it's sitting outside, that's a start. Then you might walk around your house. That's a start. Then you might go to the end of the block and back. Start somewhere and you will feel the benefits. Some of this may take longer and you're going to have to adjust as you go. Some of it you're going to be like me where you see, oh my goodness, this is work. Oh, wait. And either a plateau or even a little down. And then another one. As I figured out what worked and what didn't work for me, in the beginning, knee and leaf worked great for me with the Takasami and the Chinese Coptus. Then I switched from Neum over to Noni. Now, if I need it, I take Noni. I probably once a quarter take Noni, Chinese Coptus, and Takasami when I get stressed with my work just to get my system running on all cylinders and feeling and functioning my best. I feel like anything I can do to help. Avoiding gluten, I don't do 100% now, I probably do 80%. So you figure out what works for your body. Corn, I'll have corn probably once a week between corn chips, corn tortillas, or actual corn. Things that I used to be fastidious on avoiding in the beginning, I've been able to relax. So I want to tell you that to encourage you that in the beginning, you are going to have to be stricter, but it's temporary. As your gut and body heals, then you can relax, listen to your body, and figure out what works for you. When I am regularly eating corn, flour, gluten, I don't feel as good. So why do I want to do that? Yes, I'll have, you know, a bit of a roll when I'm at a restaurant, a bun. Um, but am I going to do that every day? No, it's not worth it. I'd rather feel good and be able to function, not have any pain, not have any signs whatsoever of my fourth autoimmune. And I have tested negative for all of that, fibromyalgia. That was my fourth one I could remember. There's no test for that. It was a catch-all bucket that some of my symptoms didn't fit into a bucket, so they labeled me with that. And speaking of labels, my functional doctor doesn't test. I took in my whole folder from all my doctors, all my specialists, and I'm like, here, help me. And he's like, okay, what's that? I'm like, it's all my tests and all my results and everything I've had done and prescriptions. He's like, okay, put that down and let's talk. How do you feel? What's the problems? When did this start? And then do you have exposure to mold, mildew, all of those types of questions. As we talked, he figured out instantly, being vegan, and I'd had Botox. Those are, the Botox I could have handled if I wasn't vegan, because I used to get it all the time, but I'd weakened my body. So depending on your diet, you could have weakened it, and then something that maybe you've handled in the past, stress, whatever, you aren't handling as well. The other thing is, people frequently get a test, and they're all excited that maybe I've got this, and this is going to provide a treatment. And then it comes back and the test is negative. And they're like, what do I have? Oh, the doctors say it's all psychosomatic. No, it's not. You know how you feel. You know how you used to feel and that you're not healthy. You're not functioning the same way. Listen to your body and treat the root cause so here's another example. When I had Sjogren's, my eyes were so dry, I was peeling my eyelids off my eyeballs in the morning. They wanted to do surgery and put tubes in my eyes. And I'm like, most people aren't born with tubes in their eyes. That's not going to fix the root cause. I'm so glad I didn't get that. I couldn't even imagine if I'd have gotten that. They frequently will just do what they've been trained to do and that doesn't mean it's the right solution. 
So I am not a big believer in tests. I'm a believer in listening to your body and whatever label you've been given, it's your gut. Figure out why did your gut go off to begin with? How can you avoid that even temporarily to fix it? So when I say even temporarily, I'm never going to be vegan again. I understand the need for a well-balanced diet and that includes red meat, particularly red meat. Your body cannot convert certain things, certain vitamins and minerals without the red meat. Not only can you not eat enough, but it can't convert it. So it may be temporary for you. I don't think I'll ever get Botox again. I don't want to find out if my body's strong enough to handle it. And when I realize what it did when my body wasn't, even if I'm strong and healthy enough, why do I want to put that in there? It's not worth it for me. So you can decide once you've figured out what the root cause is, if it might be something that you avoid forever or temporarily, like improving your diet and maybe you'll have Slim Jims once in a while but not live on them, that type of thing. But once you've healed, then you can make decisions that are right for you of what you want to do going forward, of how can you keep your health and enjoy life. And more than anything, I hope I've given you hope. That's why I make these videos. So that's everything that I had. I know it's hard for me to give generic advice when everybody is in an individual, but I really hope this helps. And I'm going to link my gut playlist below, and I'm going to link some of my websites below and previous autoimmune videos below. Thank you so much for watching, and more than anything, don't give up. You can regain your health. Much love to everybody, and I hope you have a wonderful day.